So I wanted to go over the polarity thing one more time. Um, you can see here, this is the electron cloud like we talked about. Here's the two atoms. So in a polar bond, the distribution of electrons is uneven. There are more electrons around the bromine atom than the hydrogen. So the bromine actually has a slight negative charge, not a full negative one charge, but a slight negative charge like um, a magnet. So that's polarity. It's uneven distribution of the electron cloud. So the same thing happens with water. So it can be, you know, one atom is slightly negative and two atoms are slightly positive, like in water. Uh, molecules are either polar or nonpolar depending on the nature of the bonds. Basically, it's really dependent on the electronegativity difference. Um, one way to distinguish them is nonpolar molecules, because they aren't slightly negative or positive, aren't attracted to magnetic or electric fields, and polar molecules are. Solubility is simply the ability of a substance to dissolve in another. Uh, the type of liquid and the type of solid, whether it's polar or nonpolar, determines whether something will dissolve. So nonpolar liquids can only dissolve in nonpolar solids. Polar liquids can, only, can dissolve both. So we say water is the universal solvent, and the reason for that is water is polar. And so water can dissolve both polar and nonpolar solids. Um, differences in properties are a result of these attractive forces, so um, we can have different intermolecular forces. Inter means between, and molecular is for molecules, so intermolecular forces are the forces between molecules. They are not bonds, so we're not talking about the force between the protons and the electrons, we're talking about the force between individual water molecules. So intermolecular forces are always weaker than bonds. The other term for intermolecular forces are van der Waals forces. Those are just two terms that mean the same thing. There are three types of intermolecular forces. There's dispersion, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bond. This is the order of them from weakest to strongest. So dispersion is the weakest force. Hydrogen bond is the strongest. Um, a dispersion force exists between nonpolar substances. It is the only one of the three that exists between nonpolar it is a very, very weak attraction, and I'm going to show you a picture in a second that shows um, when a dispersion happens. A dipole-dipole force is like the base force. This is like a magnetic attraction between two polar molecules. Remember, polar molecules kind of look like magnets. So when these two polar magnetic molecules are moving through space and they come together, they stick, and that's a dipole-dipole force. A hydrogen bond is just an extremely strong dipole-dipole force. It occurs between hydrogen and we can remember FON, F-O-N, fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. That's where you're going to get a hydrogen bond. So if we want to look at the differences and similarities between these three, dispersion is the only one that is between nonpolar. Dipole, dipole, and hydrogen are between polar molecules. And then the difference between a dipole, dipole, and a hydrogen bond is that a hydrogen bond is just a very strong dipole. So this is the dispersion force. Basically, it starts out these two molecules as purely polar, very even distribution. When they come in contact with each other, they temporarily form two dipole or form two polar molecules, two magnetic molecules. And as soon as they move away from each other, they're done. That's why we call it an induced dipole. It only happens when they're close together. When they're not close together, they're not polar. And that is also why it's a very, very brief attraction and it's a very, very weak attraction. Obviously, hydrogen and oxygen to make water, remember it's FO or N, is a very strong hydrogen bond. And this gives water a lot of the properties that it has. Um, properties of covalent compounds you can just always think as less severe than ionic. Ionic compounds have stronger attraction between the particles than covalent, so ionic um, compounds are always higher boiling point, higher melting point, stronger, etc. and so forth. Covalent are always weaker than that. The melting and boiling points are lower, um, many are in gaseous phase instead of solid phase, they're very soft solids, etc. and so forth. Um, the covalent compounds can still form a crystal lattice, but again, there's less hold between the particles. Um, a number of solids are composed uh, of only atoms interconnected by a network. These are called covalent network solids. An example of that would be diamond. These, again, are brittle, but they're not conductive. That kind of differentiates them between ionic compounds, and they're extremely hard. And that is the end to finish up um, that PowerPoint that we didn't finish in class. So that material will be on the quiz tomorrow.